for something completely different. <laughs> it's a rich man's world. Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story. Real talk about money. Markets. Life. Now, it's The Real Investment Show with Lance Roberts. Presented by RIA Advisors. And good morning. Welcome to the show. It's, of course, Tuesday as we get this last week of the month underway, as, of course, we've talked about here over the last couple of days. Quarter in rebalancing kind of continues here. Yesterday morning, markets sold off a little bit um, and then rocketed higher into the afternoon as, again, you know, there was some news out of Ukraine, potentially, you know, there's some more movement towards talks. But, you know, that's been going on here for a while. But again, a little bit of good news here, not surprising, but markets liked it. And again, with you know a lot of portfolio managers, very underweight equities we've talked about, uh, they need to get those assets on the books by the end of the quarter so that when they report their quarterly reports, they've got all your favorite stocks du jour on the list, right? So <laughs> it'll be there. Um, but again, you know, so the markets did rally yesterday. And again, that's good news. Um, again, quarter in rebalancing. And, and you know, it's very interesting here too, because again, we talk a lot about psychology. I do a market wrap once a week with Adam Taggart. Uh, we post that on our website at realinvestmentadvice.com. But, you know, also too, one of the things that we talk about a lot is psychology and, and how as investors, we allow psychology to affect our investment decision making. And, you know, it wasn't just too long ago, right, that the markets had an extremely sharp down day. We opened down 3% and the markets rallied back 3% that day. And that was the day that Russia invaded Ukraine. And this wasn't that long ago that we were talking about, you know, this, this horrible event, right? We're right on the verge of World War III just a few weeks ago. And ever since then, that really kind of marked the low point because after that, despite all of this angst over what's happening in Russia, and again, I'm not discounting what's happening between Russia and Ukraine at all, but this is just a really good indication of psychology and how we allow that psychology to impact our financial decisions in life. You know, ever since then, the market has done nothing but really consolidate and now move higher here over the last few days. Very typical of market action. We'd gotten very oversold on the, you know, during that period of time where we were worried about what was happening between Russia and Ukraine, trying to really factor that into the markets. And since then, now we've completely reversed that. Now we're extremely overbought on very, pretty much every condition here, and we're approaching a very extreme condition on, on the markets as well. So again, most of this rally has likely been booked in for the time being as portfolio managers are now booking those assets on their books. Again, we could have a few more days here of kind of a rally here moving into the end of the quarter. But again, a lot of that news has already been priced in. Now the concern going forward, though, of course, is going to be the Fed hiking rates, tighter monetary policy, slower economic growth, the risk of stagflation, right? That's one thing that is interesting now because 
Most people that are Googling the word stagflation don't even know what it is. The last time we had stagflation was back in the 70s when, you know, Brent and I were just, you know, running around drinking out of garden hoses. That was, you know, that was the stagflation of the 70s. You know, the stagflation today, of course, is going to be very different from what we saw previously. And it's going to impact families and households very differently as well. But stagflation is, is functionally a period of high inflation with very low economic growth. And that's really kind of your worst possible outcome because, again, what you want is high inflation rates with higher growth, right? Because if you've got strong economic growth, inflation is a byproduct of strong economic growth, and that's okay. That means that everybody's going to work, they're earning money, they're buying more stuff, so producers uh, can charge more, but that's okay because as producers charge more, they pay their workers more, and wages come up, which means people buy more, so forth and so on. So it's the cost and consequence of economic growth that gets you inflation. But when you have inflation that is artificially determined, and of course we've talked about this on the show a lot, is that you know that $5 trillion worth of liquidity that was pumped into the markets you know, back in 2020 has now shown up as inflation, but we don't have the subsequent ability to maintain strong economic growth to support it. And so now what we'll have is a period of high inflation and declining economic growth. And that's very, that's very challenging for individuals to maintain their economic balance. Of course, don't worry about this, though, because, you know, the government's got your back. <laughs> you know, we continue just to kind of move on down the road and do the same things that created the problem to begin with. And one of the things that creates slower economic growth is more debt. And just this week, Joe Biden has now passed out his new budget proposal. Now, this won't go anywhere, of course. We haven't had a budget since 2008. But here's the interesting part about this. The budget proposal is $5.8 trillion. That's about $1.8 trillion more than we spent last year on federal expenditures. So, Again, when we start looking about how we spend money in government, it's just a hodgepodge of just expenditures that are, are going to just everywhere. And nobody's really accountable for these expenditures. For instance, in the budget, there's $19 billion going to the Financial TARP Relief Fund. Right? That, yeah, that's the TARP from 2008. Why are we still funding $19 billion for a bailout program that was done during the financial crisis more than a decade ago, right? But this is just the problem. There's no oversight on how we spend money. We just once it's, you know, as, as you know, I think it was Ronald Reagan once said, is that once a government program comes to life, it stays there forever. That's not the exact quote, but you get my drift. You know, that's the problem. Once there is a, an ability to spend money, we just keep doing it. But unfortunately, we have to spend this out of debt. And as we talked about yesterday, yes, Joe Biden wants to increase taxes on the wealthy, but a $360 billion increase in tax. Now, think about this for a second, right? Just put the math together, right? Joe Biden wants to increase taxes on the wealthy, $360 billion over the next decade, but we just increased the federal budget, according to him, by almost $1.8 trillion <laughs> for the year, for one year, one fiscal year. 1.8 trillion. So again, when you're spending money at a rate that is five or six times faster than you're increasing revenue, it's just a long-term debt problem that, again, what debt does is it deters economic growth because it extracts capital from being invested in productive investments into servicing debt. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The interest on debt is going up the cost of maintaining debt is going up, which deters even more money or distracts even more money from going into productive investments just to pay the interest on the debt. And if interest rates keep going up here for very much longer, that's going to become a bigger and bigger problem. Remember that more it already takes more than 100 cents on the dollar of every tax dollar that comes in the door at the, go at the government level just to pay mandatory spending. What is mandatory spending? Social Security, welfare in general, Medicare, Medicaid, prescription drug benefits, and interest on the debt. That's the mandatory spending 
that already takes over a hundred cents on every dollar of tax revenue coming in. Just do this. Everything else you want to spend money on, increases on the debt, supercharging stations for electric vehicles, all this other hodgepodge of, of pork and earmarks that are shoved into this $5.8 trillion budget all have to be funded out of debt. And that is the problem. Not for me and Brent, we'll be dead. <laughs> but for the next generations coming up, congratulations, you own a lot of debt. Be right back after the break. We'll get into uh, this rally that we're having. Is this just a bear market squeeze or is this a bull market rally that is beginning again? We'll talk about that when we come back from the break. I'm your host, Lance Roberts, realinvestmentadvice.com. Be right back. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. There's a war being waged on your retirement dollars. And unless you act now, you'll lose the battle with inflation, higher taxes, and a lower standard of living. You can blunt the effects of rising prices with our next workshop on combating inflation in retirement. April 2nd at the Embassy Suites Houston. Richard Rosso and Danny Ratliff will help you fortify your life savings, make the most of Social Security, and lower your taxes. Register now for this free workshop at realinvestmentadvice.com. Combating inflation in retirement with Ratliff and Rosso. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Anyone can sell you insurance and they'll gladly take your premium dollars. The RIA Insurance Agency can provide you with insurance solutions tailor-made for your needs and lifestyle. Because everyone's assets are different, let RIA Insurance review what you need to protect and how. We won't sell you insurance, but what you need will be a matter of policy. RIA Insurance Agency. 888-915-0780. 888-915-0780. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Click on the insurance tab. Do you know what you don't know when hiring and retaining quality employees? Compensation is more than just wages. It's personal time off. The vacation days, healthcare benefits, a 401k. Do you know what's important to them? Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Let us show you how to make the most of an affordable, effective package that will deliver true value for your business and your employees. Call me toll free at 855-RIA-PLAN or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Bulls win in bull markets. Bears win in bear markets. Eagles soar above and take advantage of opportunity. Let us help you soar as you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. And welcome back to the show this morning. Hope you're doing well on this Tuesday as we uh, get ready to wrap up the month of March. In like a lion, out like a lamb or something like that, as the old saying goes. I'm not, I'm not sure that's really the case. Uh, but, you know, I was talking about in the last segment, though, you know, just this market rally has been nice here over the last couple of weeks, something that we had been, you know, discussing uh, for a couple of weeks. And... You know, yesterday we took some profits out of the growth stocks that we bought a couple of weeks ago because they just had huge runs over the course of the last, you know, two weeks. And so just reducing, and it's funny because I got an email, I was like, I don't understand why you keep selling your all, <laughs> selling your stocks that are going up. We're not, we didn't sell them all. We just had added to them, actually overweighted the positions, and we just brought them back down to the previous model weights. That's, that's all. Just took a little money out of the, the 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 investments and put that back in cash for now. And again, that's just a function of managing risk. And it, and it's interesting because we were talking about psychology a bit. That you know, if you remember, and, and again, this seems like a millennia ago now, but just a few weeks ago, Russia invades Ukraine and the world's coming to an end. Right. Every podcast on the planet was World War III, the end of the demise of the world as we know it, and it's it's terrible, and you know, blah 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 blah. Right? People were panicking. We're getting emails to you know sell out of everything, and since then we've had a very nice rally. And that's the way markets tend to work. Markets tend to do exactly the opposite of what you think they should do. 
And they, the market has a tendency to frustrate the most investors most of the time. That's what they do very well. And it's interesting now because if you take a look at this rally, it has all the hallmarks of what we call a bear squeeze. And this is today's article on the website as well. So if you want to read more about it, it's on the website. But a lot of, a lot of players were very, very short the markets. And once Russia invaded Ukraine, they got even more short. So, it, and as we talked about, when you have that kind of negative positioning, right? Everybody kind of got off sides of the market. They were all very short, uh, very short, very negative. This is it. The bear market's here. We're all going to crash, burn, and die. And when you have that type of very negative sentiment, it tends to be a contrarian indicator. Now, let me be really clear here. Okay, I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm saying. Market valuations are very high. The Fed's hiking interest rates. There's a there's a lot. The economy's slowing down. There's a lot of headwinds facing this market over the course of the next year, two years. There is a reasonable possibility that we will be in a recession between six and nine months and that we will see a further decline in markets. That's a very reasonable possibility. You can't invest your capital on a reasonable possibility that far out because there's too many things that can change. If you take a look at financial stress indexes, they're rising rapidly right now. The problem with that is the one big concern for the Federal Reserve is financial instability. As I just noted a minute ago, we're still bailing out TARP funds from over a decade ago. And if we have another downturn in markets or another increase in financial instability, you can bet your bottom dollar that the Federal Reserve will pivot back to a very dovish stance overnight. It was interesting this morning, there was a chart out showing that over the next three meetings for the Federal Reserve, they're going to hike the Fed funds rate by 50 basis points in three meetings. So 50 basis points for each meeting, one and a half percent increase in Fed funds rate over the next three meetings. And then a 25 basis point hike every meeting after that from now until the end of the world. <laughs> That's not going to happen. They may hike it 50 basis points once. They might get it twice. But more likely, sooner than later, you are going to have a financial disruption either in the housing market, the credit markets. It'll be some debt-related incident that causes a concern about financial solvency of the major banks. And when you start getting financial instability, inflation takes a secondary position to the Federal Reserve. They will then go back to their playbook, which is dropping rates back to zero, restarting QE, buying junk bond ETFs, whatever it is, and calling on the government for more fiscal support. We've now gotten into a wash, rinse, and repeat cycle of the markets. So... What does it all have to do with a bear squeeze? As I said, everybody got very offside the market. Everybody got very, very short, which is a contrarian setup because any type of good news in that type of environment causes people to start reversing their short positions. So if prices rise and, I've, and I'm short stocks, I've got to cover those stocks by doing what? By buying the stock that I'm short. Right, So that increases the buying pressure on stocks. And we see this particularly right now over the course of the last few weeks in some of the most commonly shorted stocks. And you know the names, GameStop, AMC, ARK, ETF funds. Those have had big, big rallies here over the last couple of weeks. Uh, GameStop's like up 100% or so in just the last three weeks. 
But that's all the hallmark of a short covering rally. And it doesn't mean that there's legs to that. It just means that when you have everybody very off sides and very positioned negatively, it provides the fuel. And this is what we talked about a couple of weeks ago. It provides a fu the fuel that you need for that kind of a rally in the markets. And that's exactly what's happened. So again, there, there's nothing magical about anything that's going on, but it does really bring about two important points. One, it really brings up to the fact that we've talked about a lot. It's you know, watching your psychology. You know, it's it's one thing to look at headlines and go, you know, we've got inflation, we've got Russia, Ukraine, we've got you know, all, you know, the Fed's hiking rates. We've got all these very terrible headlines that certainly make you want to just be all in cash. And that typically happens, you know, at the low points of markets. And now, look, I'm not saying that the low for the year is in, and I'm not saying that we're not out of danger just yet. But the point is, I'm, I'm, I want to reinforce with you is that be careful about letting your psychology dictate your investing. Also remember that headlines don't necessarily impact all stocks equally. you've got to really dig into your portfolio and look at what you own because certain companies have different exposures. Uh, a good example is Nestle. And we did, uh, in our, we, every day we publish a daily market commentary that we send out by 7.30 in the morning uh, to kind of get you, you know, set up for the day. Just little highlights and tidbits about earnings and economic reports and interesting tidbits about markets. Uh, we also put in a daily market trading update every morning in our daily commentary. So if you go by the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, and click on the subscribe to the daily commentary uh, banner on the, on the page, we'll email it to you every morning, get you set up for the day. But it was interesting because recently we talked about Hershey's, and, and particularly in the context of its exposure to Russia. Now, Hershey's provides more. I'm oh, sorry, not Hershey's. Yes. Nestle's. I apologize. Nestle's chocolate provides more than chocolate to Russia. They provide sugar and confectionery items, etc. Now, you would certainly immediately we all want to sell everything we own that has exposure to Russia. It's like, oh my gosh, Nestle's has exposure to Russia. We should sell that stock. Be careful with that. Nestle's generates about $94 billion a year in revenue. Only about 2% of that revenue comes out of Russia. Now, the revenue is going to drop by about 2%, and the stock is overvalued. But uh, you know, the point here is, is that be careful just throwing out every stock you own just because they might have some exposure to Russia. You also need to make sure of what kind of exposure they have to Russia. But this is the point about making wholesale investment decisions about your portfolio and and also just basically and and the other option and the other problem that we have is that we one side a trade and what I mean by that is is that we now are invading Russia so we our our entire portfolio is now you know gold and oil which has been an okay trade but as soon as the conflict ends and sanctions are removed those very very overbought equities are going to reverse. So you have to be careful about positioning risk as well. But these are all the psychological decisions that we make. So the, the important thing here is, is that just go back and focus on your psychology and don't let the headline fear impact your financials. This is why, you know, I've said before, is like during the day when I'm working, I don't have a I don't have CNBC on. I don't have Fox Business on. I don't have financial media on in any form because I don't want the distraction away from my organic research. Because I'm just looking, I download raw data and we do our research off of raw data to extract all of those emotional pulls that you get out of the financial media. Once you turn off financial media and turn off your other entertainment and fictional channels like, you know, CNN, 
you'll actually do better as an investor because you'll extract those emotional pulls out of your daily investment decisions. Be right back after the break. The Real Investment Advice blog. It's required reading for the informed investor. Catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com. There's a war being waged on your retirement dollars. And unless you act now, you'll lose the battle with inflation, higher taxes, and a lower standard of living. You can blunt the effects of rising prices with our next workshop on combating inflation in retirement. April 2nd at the Embassy Suites Houston. Richard Rosso and Danny Ratliff will help you fortify your life savings, make the most of Social Security, and lower your taxes. Register now for this free workshop at realinvestmentadvice.com. Combating inflation and retirement with Ratliff and Rosso. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Anyone can sell you insurance and they'll gladly take your premium dollars. The RIA Insurance Agency can provide you with insurance solutions tailor-made for your needs and lifestyle. Because everyone's assets are different, let RIA Insurance review what you need to protect and how. We won't sell you insurance, but what you need will be a matter of policy. RIA Insurance Agency. 888-915-0780. 888-915-0780. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Click on the insurance tab. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. A passive investment portfolio requires active risk management. It's not a choice, it's necessity. Diversification doesn't protect against risk of loss. Let us actively help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Can't catch the whole show now? Listen to our podcast later at realinvestmentadvice.com. An energy rebate equating to $100 a month for individuals. Now, my daughter would love this. She was just complaining about filling up her car. Was she complaining about that while she's staying? Standing in line waiting on a six dollar cup of coffee. No, the Real Investment Show podcast. The gym that she goes to. Yeah. Is, it is literally, ladies and gentlemen, three hundred yards down the street to the gym. She drives, so I'm letting her learn her lesson about being frugal at realinvestmentadvice.com. Learn to use your feet, Flintstone. Small businesses are discovering that attracting, retaining top talent come down to more than just salary. In today's highly competitive job market, compensation is more than just wages. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Healthcare and retirement plans can make the difference in hiring and retaining the best employees. We can show you how to build an affordable, effective employment package that delivers true value for your workers and your business. Call me toll free at 855-RIA-PLAN or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Real Investment Show podcasts are now available from Stitcher Smart Radio at stitcher.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. It's a quick and easy application. Just simply click Ask a Question at realinvestmentadvice.com or give us a call at 855-RIA-PLAN. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. You can blunt the effects of rising prices with our next workshop on combating inflation in retirement. April 2nd at the Embassy Suites Houston. Richard Rosso and Danny Ratliff will help you fortify your life savings make the most of Social Security, and lower your taxes. Register now for this free workshop at realinvestmentadvice.com. Combating inflation and retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. So welcome back to the show this morning. I'm Real Science Roberts. Frank Lanton joining me at 6.33. So I'm just sitting here reading this article this morning. Just uh, I was on the break. <laughs> you know, so we talk a lot on the show. Well, not a lot, but every now and then we talk about, you know, health and fitness and the importance of, you know, focusing on your health as well as your money because ultimately when you get into retirement, it's great that you saved up money. All right, awesome. And... You know, again, if you're listening to this show, you're probably because, look, everybody hates finance and is boring. I get it. We try to make it entertaining, but finance is boring. Right. And and this is, 
you know, the, the big problem that we have in America. So if you're actually, you know, drudging your way through the show this morning, I appreciate you. But you're also not normal because you actually care about your money and you probably have more money saved up than the average American. And congratulations, you're doing a great job. You deserve a pat on the back. But it's great that you saved up all this money, but if you're not taking care of your health by eating right and by exercising a little bit, you're going to wind up spending a big chunk of your savings on your health care and retirement. And again, you know, we talk about retirement and our golden years and, you know, golden years in and out of doctor's offices and hospitals really isn't all that fun. So it's important to also take into to your, your process of saving for retirement to also save for your retirement by focusing on your health. And again, we're not, look, you know, Yes, I eat very strict diets. I work out every day of the week. Yeah, that's me. I overdo everything. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about, you know, going out for a walk three or four times a week, take the dogs out, go for a, a walk for a mile or two, get your heart rate up a little bit, and make better bad choices. We used to have, Brent and I used to have a good friend of ours on the show uh, before he retired, Keith Klein, who was a nutrition guru and very well respected but he had a very simple motto which was make better bad choices so in other words when you go out and eat a burger right get it without mayo and without cheese and bacon <laughs> right? just get a burger um it's still not great for you but it's better it's a better bad choice right so you can still do the things you want just try to make better bad choices and improve your health in the process now, why do I bring all this up? So Berkshire Hathaway just bought Allegheny for like 12, 18 billion, something like this is, is a drop in the bucket in the ocean of the cash that Berkshire Hathaway has. They still have like, even after the, the cash purchase of Allegheny, I think they still have like 170 billion in cash. And the problem for, for Berkshire Hathaway is the ability to buy something. Well, there's an article out this morning talking about Dairy Queen, which is one of the companies that Berkshire Hathaway has owned for 25 years. And it's an interesting location because, you know, he's buying Allegheny for billions of dollars. And here's a company, Dairy Queen. They have 3,300 locations. And they generated in 2021... Net income of $84 million, million, not billion, $84 million. And their annual revenue was $224 million. I mean, here's a company that in the spec of the companies that Berkshire Hathaway owns barely registers at the bottom line, right? I mean, this is this is like a rounding error for for, <laughs> for the revenue for Berkshire Hathaway. And the stuff that they're doing and, and you know, the cash. I mean, look, Warren Buffett makes more annually on the interest on his cash holdings than Dairy Queen throws out, right? Just to put it into context. So what, what, is, what does this all have to do with your health? <laughs> One of my wife's guilty pleasures is Dairy Queen's ice cream. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> Yours too. There you My go. My wife's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's pretty much everybody. Uh, Dairy Queen is expanding its burger offerings as the fast food chain looks beyond blizzards and other desserts. Now, about two years ago, they revamped their chicken fingers. Still can't compete with Chick Fil A. Sorry. But now they're coming up with their new burger line called the Stack Burger. The new Stack Burger comes in a new line. For U.S. customers, the flamethrower, loaded A1, bacon, two cheese deluxe, two cheese deluxe, and the original cheeseburger. And they're available as a one-third pound double burger or one-half pound triple burger, hence the name Stack. And this is a new line that is now being rolled out by Dairy Queen across the country. And in fact, it's in their DQ grill and chill locations, which make up about 72% of Dairy Queen's 3,300 U.S. restaurants. 
Does so it, come it is with coming a, uh, to a one near you. And then, yes, it comes with, you know, a, a cardio a, crash cart. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> there is one located next to the door <laughs> at every location. Break glass in case of emergency. <laughs> but, you know, it's a cardiac burger. It's yeah. great, right? But no, my point is that, but look, here's the point about this. And there's nothing wrong with this. I think it's great, right? It's everybody deserves a guilty pleasure every now and then. And I think you should do it. But again, you know, try to make better bad choices. These are the, the it will pay off for you. Look, and, and it's interesting because we as individuals don't want to work out. And this is why for years I've advocated that we see we need to change the name from working out. Nobody wants to work, right? Change it to sex because everybody will want to go have sex, right? At the gym. <laughs> So, you know, the, the problem is the name, right? You, you, I've got to exercise. Oh, don't want to do that. You know, I'm tired. That's work. I don't want to work out. Um, but, you know, these are the things that, you know, if you do this, just like, you know, you sacrifice to save money, you know, you've got to make these small adjustments, these small sacrifices, because if you don't, the financial cost in retirement will be more than you can imagine. And look, the cost of health care is not getting cheaper by any stretch of the imagination. Starting with the Affordable Care Act, it has been getting more and more expensive as we go along. And that is going to continue to be the case. And so as health care costs keep going up, and look, the more you want to socialize health care, you keep getting higher costs and lower quality. So if you're going to want good health care in retirement, it's going to be private eventually, private health care that you'll pay for, and that will be very expensive. If you don't believe me, go look at how health care in Europe works. There are two health care systems. Yes, there's the one the government pays for that you don't want, and then there's the private health care system that you do want. And if you really have money, you fly to the United States for health care. That's just a function of how it works. But you can offset a lot of those costs. And again, the small contributions that you make towards your health today will pay massive dividends down the road for your financial health. And that's and that's really kind of the, the key point. And and the, again, you know, I, I you know, it's it's whenever you start talking about health and fitness or healthcare, Brent kind of rolls his eyes like, oh my God, you know, where's my Oreos? Uh <laughs> But they're the thin ones. They're the thin, <laughs> better bad, bad choices. <laughs> no, that's just a ripoff by by Ori by Nabisco, right? To sell to sell you less for more money. That's called shrinkflation. Exactly, <laughs> thin Oreos. That's communism in a bag. It ought to be against the law. <laughs> you know, and Hershey's has done a good job of that too. Oh, they, yeah. they started coming out with the Hershey Kisses that mm-hmm. have the air bubbles in it. Yeah. Now it's just a Hershey's peck on the cheek. <laughs> Putting air bubbles in chocolate just means you're getting less chocolate. Yeah, That's all yeah. that means. They, they got that from the Easter Bunny. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, just think about it. It, it's, it is important because as we move further into retirement, and again, nobody likes the prospect of moving into retirement, but you know it will pay dividends. Again, you know, the, the more money you spend on medications, the more money you spend on you know, just trying to get from point A to point B, you know, is less money you've got in the bank. And unfortunately for most Americans, and again, we're talking about not you, most likely, if you're, again, if you're trudging your way through the show. As I'm talking about this, by the way, Fox News now has an entire spot going on on the Dairy Queen stack burger. <laughs> So, but as, but again, the, the vast majority of Americans are in debt, um, have less than $500 to save up for an emergency, which means that healthcare and retirement is going to be the primary extractor of capital from them. The majority of their Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid is going to be spent on health care. You can avoid that by taking some simple actions today. So there you go. Um, come back from break. We'll wrap. So how did I get off an entire thing off one article on I, a Dairy Queen stack burger? I think you're hungry. 
I'm not hungry yet, but I, I'm getting that way now. You keep working on it, you're going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. We can make a better bad choice and go get a small blizzard instead of the, the large. I can't tell you the last time I've had ice cream. I weep for you. <laughs> but somebody keeps sending me peppermint patties, and I and I love you. <laughs> I wish I knew who you were so I could thank you. But whoever keeps sending me peppermint patties, thank you. Because that is my one vice that uh, mm-hmm. keeps me alive. <clears throat> so, all right, quick break. Be right back. Wrap up the show. Don't go away. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. There's a war being waged on your retirement dollars. And unless you act now, you'll lose the battle with inflation, higher taxes, and a lower standard of living. You can blunt the effects of rising prices with our next workshop on combating inflation in retirement. April 2nd at the Embassy Suites Houston. Richard Rosso and Danny Ratliff will help you fortify your life savings, make the most of Social Security, and lower your taxes. Register now for this free workshop. Workshop at realinvestmentadvice.com. Combating inflation in retirement with Ratliff and Rosso. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Anyone can sell you insurance and they'll gladly take your premium dollars. The RIA Insurance Agency can provide you with insurance solutions tailor made for your needs and lifestyle. Because everyone's assets are different, let RIA Insurance review what you need to protect and how. We won't sell you insurance, but what you need will be a matter of policy. RIA Insurance Agency. 888-915-0780. 888-915-0780. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Click on the insurance tab. What worries you about your money? Enhance your financial success with RIA Advisors' free financial planning tool, MyBlocks. It's our online modular manager for your money and your life. Does your vision of retirement match up to reality? MyBlocks can help to determine how much you'll need and how you can achieve. Create your own personal financial vision for the next decade with MyBlocks, our free tool at RIAAdvisors.com. Click on the Client Portal tab, RIAAdvisors.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Manage risk and volatility rather than trying to manage gains. You don't have to be right all the time. Long-term investing success is a 70% gain. Let us help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment show yeah I agree with you. and welcome back to the show this morning I'm real science Roberts Brad Clanton driving our link challenge bus as always hasn't hit a curb this morning yesterday was a disaster it wasn't bad <laughs> just a few curbs and a stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> but no one was killed. <laughs> Fortunately. <laughs> and nobody got slapped on the bus either. That's this right. was a good thing. You know, it's interesting that you know, now they're all, everybody's up in arms, and now we have to have an investigation and all this stuff. And there was a comment made, it's like, we don't need this type of violence in society. <laughs> i tell you what, you come up and say something to my wife, you're going to get more than a slap. Right. I mean, it's, it's violence is not slapping somebody for getting out of line. Yeah, you know, we need yeah. more of that. See, this is the problem with social media. We've gotten used to getting away from saying stuff that we would never say to somebody's face online. Oh, yeah. And and so now when somebody says it, you know, to somebody's face and they get slapped for it, it's like, oh, my gosh, violence. Well, the irony is that th this industry, which produces so much violent <laughs> entertainment, <laughs> is up in arms over a slap, oh, no, right? It, it is kind of funny, right? Because a lot of these, a lot of these Hollywood elites, they're mm -hmm. you know anti-gun, but then you see them in every war movie that comes out, you know, in every. I think next year the Oscars should be produced by Michael Bay. Uh, you know what? I think they should be congratulating Will Smith because this is the first time people are even paying attention to the Oscars <laughs> well, in years. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it was on? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea, honestly. Yeah. Right? I mean, the, the Oscars mm-hmm. was on. And you know, now... Fest. Well, yeah, but now at least I... I know who won best Oscar. I, I would have. I could not have told you, had this not occurred. I could not have told you who won best picture or best mm, actor. Mm-hmm. Right? Couldn't have told you. No. But now I know. I don't know what Coda is, but <laughs> I'll have to go watch it and see why it won. It's probably one of these artsy movies, and I won't mm. be able to get through it. Yeah. But well, it has. See, a- personally, I need movies where a lot of people are getting shot. That's the kind of movie I need. Michael Bay. Well, yeah, exactly. We watched Black Hawk Down last night. Yeah. We so. watched London Has Fallen. Yeah. Have you, well, did you watch it out of sequence, or are you watching the sequence? It was just the movie. No, it's a trilogy. Well, the one that we watched was a singular. No, no, it's it, you watch the second part of a trilogy. You have to go watch and 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 watch um, the first the first one, White House Down. Oh, okay, yeah, I saw that too. As, <laughs> and did you watch Angel Has Fallen? No, I haven't seen that yet. Okay, that's the yeah. third one. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's tonight. <laughs> That's tonight. If you can find it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to watch them in order so you know what's going on. There's a, there's a sequence to these things. See, this is this is the problem with you. You do stuff out of order. It makes it makes me crazy. It's okay. I'm trying to keep my wife I'm entertained. I'm type A, okay? Yeah, Just yeah. <laughs> trying to keep my wife entertained. They're very narrow uh, niche trust of me. films that trust she'll me. watch. This, uh, this is what I've stumbled into, mm-hmm. right? Is that all of a sudden I've I've been married to my wife now. I, I love my wife to death. We've been together like 15 years. This year is our 12th anniversary. I just found out she likes war movies. Really? Just figured this out. Yeah. It's been 12 years. I just figured out she likes historical action war movies. Now, not not just any war movies. She likes the ones that are you know referenced to real events. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Midway and. Mm-hmm. And Dunkirk, and she she really she likes these historical biographical reenactments, and mine, I'm like, I had no idea. Mine says I don't want to watch a movie that's in another country, meaning the war movies. Oh, okay. You know, that, that cuts out World War Two. It does. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> World War One, <laughs> and Korea, <laughs> Vietnam. Yeah, that pretty much cuts them all. <laughs> Civil War movies, yep, you got. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyway, stuff you learn, you yeah. know, and you're married long enough, you learn new stuff all That's the time. That's right. Anyway, all right, uh, getting ready to wrap up the show this morning. Um, so, again, uh, markets kind of said, again, as we kind of talked about earlier this morning, markets are kind of set to rally this morning out of the gate. Earnings season pretty much over here. And now we are just really into the midst of two things that are going on. One is, as we said earlier, this morning is that we've got a lot of this portfolio rebalancing for the end of the quarter. So a lot of these major fund managers, hedge fund managers, et cetera, were really off sides. They had too much cash on their books. Um, bonds had gone down in price. So now they've got to buy equities back that they sold previously. And they've got to buy their bonds to get the weightings up. Uh, relative to their bond allocation models, because at the end of the quarter, these mutual funds, hedge funds, et cetera, have reporting requirements that they've got to have certain asset weightings and not that much cash on their books, et cetera. Can't bill on cash. So if you're in cash, it's not good because they can't bill you for it. So that's why you're getting this portfolio, this kind of rally here, this kind of portfolio window dressing that's going on. And this will this will end after the first of the month. So this will go through Friday, which is April the first, and starting next week, that bit of buying support will will evaporate. Now, the the better news is that corporate share buybacks are now at an all time record. And as we've talked about previously, if you go to our website and look up forty percent of the market's gain has been solely due to buybacks. It's an article we wrote. Mm. late last year. But since 2011, 40% of the increase in the stock market is directly attributable to the buybacks done by major corporations, including Berkshire Hathaway, which is now buying back a tremendous number of shares as well. Apple's bought back half a trillion dollars worth of their stock. There's an interesting aspect to this, though, because you know, there is a limit to the amount of stock you can buy back because if you buy back enough stock, you eventually go private. Um, <laughs> and you don't have a stock market. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's an interesting problem that exists here that 
you know, nobody's really talking about. But the more stock that these companies buy back, the less liquid the market becomes. And we've been doing this for over a decade now. And those stock buybacks have been a major support of asset prices. And it primarily benefits insiders of corporations. Now, just as a quick recap, and I've written on this. New, again, if you go to our website, realinvestmentadvice.com, and just type stock buybacks or share buybacks in the search bar at the top, you'll get numerous articles on this. But one of the, the, the myths of Wall Street is that share buybacks are a return of capital to shareholders. It's not. Share buybacks benefit insiders. And let me just explain to you why. At any moment of any day, if you want to sell your stock, you will get fair market value for your stock, period. Whatever that market trade is, that's what you'll get. So if, if Apple says, I'm going to buy back $5 billion worth of stock, and they go to market and they buy back shares of stock at whatever the current market price is, it's the exact same price that you would get if you sold your stock. So if Apple buys back their stock and you don't sell it to them, you got no return of capital, right? You still have the stock. So it's not returning anything to you as a shareholder. Who does it benefit? Well, this was the SEC, Securities Exchange Commission, did a study on this. And the people that benefit and participate the most in share buybacks, not surprisingly, are corporate insiders who have been granted stock options and stock as part of their compensation packages. And they're the ones that sell their shares back to the company in order to convert those shares into cash, into wealth. You know, this is one of the big misstatements by Joe Biden earlier when he talked about his budget. He says, these billionaires need to pay more tax because they don't pay any tax. You know, people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk don't pay any taxes. Well, the reason they don't pay any taxes is because if they are out selling their shares of stock in open markets, what the markets will assume is that they know something about the company that has not been made public, and that's why they're selling their shares, and that leads to a sell-off in the shares of stock. So instead of doing that, Jeff Bezos goes to the bank and he says, hey, you know, I need a couple of billion dollars and I'll pledge my company stock for it. And, of course, it's Amazon. And so the bank says, sure, no problem. Here's how much how much you want, $2 billion, $5 billion, whatever you want. They give it to them as a loan. There's no tax on a loan. So these people have money to spend on houses and jets and cars and boats and planes and trains and automobiles and whatever they want to buy with it, but it's all through debt. Now, they pay their debt off any time, simply sell some shares and pay off their debt. Elon Musk did this just recently. That's the way Elon Musk was funding all of his purchases was through debt. And in order to sell shares, which he did... He went to the market first and said, hey, I want to sell some shares to pay for some stuff. Is it okay? He asked permission. First time a CEO has ever asked permission of the general public to sell shares. General public said, sure, no problem. Go for it. And he sold a lot of shares, about 10% of his holdings. He paid $11 billion in tax. The most of any human ever on record. So when Joe Biden says the rich don't pay their fair share, Elon Musk just paid the fair share for just about everybody on the planet. But this is but that's the issue, right? And he did this so, so he could pay off his debts and have some cash to spend and do whatever he wants to do, and it's fine. But this is the why CEOs of companies use debt to fund their lifestyles because they don't have to pay tax on it, but it's more than just trying to avoid tax. It's also trying to avoid the negative sentiment on their stock as a major insider of a company selling their company shares. Not everything is as simple as it seems in media headlines. So this is what I'm saying. Be careful about what you see in the media, especially on the Comedy News Network and others, because it's not news. 
and in most cases, it's not even actual <laughs> information. <laughs> All right, wraps up the show for the day. Be back tomorrow. Wednesday edition, Danny Ratliff joining me. Get by the website. Our new article is out this morning, Bear Squeeze or Bull Market. That is on the website now uh, as we kind of go through the markets, where we're positioned now, what we're doing in our portfolios. It's all there for you on the website, realinvestmentadvice.com. Have a great day. Be back here tomorrow, realinvestmentadvice.com. It's a rich man's world.